Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain the concept of redocking. So, what is redocking? In redocking, we perform molecular docking of the co-crystallized ligand in the binding pocket of its natural target and we see whether the docking software can predict the natural binding force of that ligand. Okay, so in step by step in this video, I am going to explain uh, everything about redocking and for explaining, uh, I am going to use a protein SGLT2 that means sodium glucose co-transporter 2 which is present in our kidney and involved in transport of sodium and glucose molecules. And the PDB ID of this protein is 7VSI and this structure has been prepared through using cryo-electron microscopy. So usually in protein data bank, we get structure which are determined through cryo-electron microscopy and most importantly, X-ray crystallography. So both uh, type of structures are very accurate. So in this protein associated with it is natural ligand that means empagliflozin. It's an inhibitor of SGLT2. Okay. So first, let's have a look at the structure of this protein molecule. Okay. I have already downloaded the structure from the protein data bank and I have opened in it in the Biovia Discovery Studio for visualization purpose. Let's see. So this is the structure of sodium glucose co-transporter 2 and you can see its ligand empagliflozin is one approved drug which is used to treat uh, diabetes type 2. Okay. So this ligand is associated with it. So we can say the binding force of this empagliflozin is 100% accurate because this pose has not been determined through molecular docking or any computational experiment. This has been determined through cryo-electron microscopy. So, we can say this pose is very accurate. Okay. So, let's see. This empagliflozin is associated with chain A. This protein has two chains, chain A and chain B. And this is the ligand which is associated with chain A. And the name of the ligand is 7 r 7 Okay. Now, we have to extract this ligand from this protein molecule. And then we will perform molecular docking in this active site pocket. And we will see whether the molecular docking software can predict this binding force or not. So, let's see. What is the procedure? How to power from redocking? Okay. So in our docking folder, we have with us the PDB ID of 7 BSI. So let's open it in Notepad. So you can see these are the coordinates of the atoms of protein molecules. And these atoms or amino acids are part of chain A. And you know our impactive fuzzin is associated with chain A. So let's scroll it. I am scrolling down it. And at the end you can see these are the atoms of chain B. But our ligand is associated with chain A. So you can see these are the coordinates. Here it is written as H atom, that means 7 R3 ligand, the atoms of the ligand molecule. Now, cut this part, that means coordinates of the H atoms or ligand molecule. Cut it. Okay. And paste it into a new notepad file. It's a new notepad file and then paste the coordinates of the ligand molecule. Now the coordinates of the ligand molecules are present in the new notepad. Then save this file as save as 
separate file i am saving it in the same folder that means docking folder and save it as all file select the option all file and give a name suppose impact glitch causing dot pdb always write the extension if you don't write this extension the file will not be saved properly okay then save it so it has been saved and this is our protein file where we have removed the ligand part then it save it then save it simply click save so the protein file will be saved where the ligand coordinates are absent okay now we have one protein pdb file and mpag deposit that means ligand you can open it in the biovia discovery studio you can see this is the ligand molecule only the ligand molecule now we can use this ligand file for our molecular docking experiment so you can perform molecular docking with several docking software like autodoc4 autodoc vina molecular virtual so tutorials are all already available in my youtube channel so you can follow this tutorial and perform molecular docking so in this tutorial i am not going to perform the molecular docking but i am just trying to explain the concept of redocking okay so uh, i have already performed and result is uh, with me so i can show you what is the natural binding pole of the ligand and what is the dock pole whether they are similar or not so if this docking software predict the natural binding pole or that means the rmsd between the docked pole and the co crystallized pole rmsd is less than 2 then uh, it is assumed that these two poles are very similar okay so on the basis of rmsd so what is uh, rmsd you can i have already explained it in my previous video uh, tutorial video about rmsd you can check it you can see okay so if the rmsd between these two uh, uh, poles that means dock pole and co crystallized pole or natural pole is less than 2 angstrom we can say our docking software has accurately predicted the natural binding pole of that ligand so as per my understanding there are four benefits of redocking okay the first is selection of appropriate pdbi that means using redocking experiment we can uh, shortlist the pdbid where the redocking experiment can be performed successfully if the redocking is successful that means this pdbid is suitable for our further factual screening process okay the second is setup of docking parameter sometimes we wonder you know, what should be the grid size or the position of the grid box and several other factors are there other parameters are there so we can use redocking experiment to set our docking parameters the docking parameters in which the redocking experiment uh, can be successfully done then we can use that docking parameter for further virtual screening process next the third point is checking suitability of the docking software that means sometimes it happens the docking software cannot predict the crystallographic pose of the lone ligand it sometimes happens i have faced this issue several times so uh, then we have to change our docking software we can use other docking software uh, the software which can successfully perform redocking experiment okay uh, because uh, if the docking software cannot predict the crystallographic pose or natural pose so how can we be sure that uh, the ts ligands will be docked properly okay that is the question so if any docking software cannot perform redocking we can choose uh, other docking software okay so it you start check the suitability of docking software and the fourth important point is getting a threshold value for screening of the test compound so when we dock the natural inhibitor or the co crystallographic ligand within the binding pocket of a target protein we get docking score or the binding uh, energy of that co crystallized ligand so this score or this delta g value can be used as threshold value okay 
So the test compound which cross this threshold value or binding energy, we can say that it binds better with the target protein than its natural inhibitor. Because uh, I found several questions in different uh, social media or other uh, group question that uh, what is the uh, good score of a uh, docking score of a test compound. Sometimes it may be minus 4, sometimes it may be 10, minus 10. That means it varies. So how to determine a good score? So in that scenario, redocking experiment can be useful. So let's see the result which I have obtained from the redocking experiment using two different docking software that is Molegro Virtual Docker and Vina. Okay. So this is the uh, docking folder and these two posts I have obtained from redocking experiment. These posts of impact defrosting from Vina and these posts from the Molegro Virtual Docker. So let's open this doc post in Vivia Discovery Studio. Now these two posts are open and this is the crystallographic post and I am copying the hierarchy of coordinates of this post and pasting into the hierarchy of crystallographic post. Now two dock posts and the crystallographic posts are present uh, here. Okay, so this is the natural binding post. And the rest of the two obtained from the molecular virtual docker and autodoc vina. So you see these poses are very similar, considerably similar and if we calculate the RMSD between these poses, so you will see they are below, their RMSD is below uh, 2 Armstrong. So I have all, uh, also docked several other test compounds. So let's see the result. This is the result. You can see these are the scores of MPAC glyphosine from molecular virtual docker and this from the autodoc vena. So, in autodoc vena, score is expressed in terms of delta G value, kilocalorie per mole. So, its score is minus 10.8. And these are the score mole doc score, Rerang score, and Frank score. You know, in molecular virtual docker, it uses three different scoring functions to score the same binding code. And out of the 19 uh, 20 ligands, 20 test compounds, only two compounds that means epicatenin gallate and compound number 14 that means gan county R, they have crossed the threshold value that means the score of M. Bagley In case of gan county R, it has crossed in three coding functions that means in it has crossed the docking score of impact refrosing obtained from the autodoc vena minus 10.8 its score is minus 10.9 and in case of molecular virtual docker it has crossed the threshold value in two different scoring function that is mole doc score and transport so these test compound they do not cross the threshold value that means they are not good binder in comparison to the impact refrosing and we can further Test this gancon in R or other epicatenin in gallet for further experiment like more molecular dynamic simulation or MMP BSA binding energy. That means we can further test this compound. So uh, that's all about the redocking. So we have learned that uh, we perform redocking experiment to choose the appropriate PDB ID of protein molecule to get threshold value or docking score to compare the scores of the test compound and we can also uh, choose our docking parameter based on the result of redocking experiment and we can also check the suitability of our docking software whether this docking software can be used for this virtual screening process or not. So these are the utilities or benefits of performing redocking experiment. Okay, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching.